Psalms 121. We're going to read it. And I'm going to be reading it from the New King James Version. There are those of us who look for help when it comes to our life. There are those of us who are looking for help when it comes to our situation. And sometimes when we look for help, there is an absence of help. There is no one to go to. There is no one that could help you get out of what you're going through, help you make sense of what you're going through. Have you ever been at a place where you were looking for somebody's hand, maybe to help you fill out a paperwork or help you get through some relational issues or maybe some personal issues, and the time you reached out to them, they were not there to help? Mm. I've been there. I remember there are times when I reached out to people and I wanted them to text back at a certain time and they never text back. I reached out to some folk telling them about what's deeply going on on the inside, but none of them really understood and I felt like I was all alone in it. Am I speaking to anybody here that knows what I'm talking about? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. When you was facing some situations that made you feel like you should commit some suicide, in your life you you made you you were going through some things that made you feel as if no one cared about you mm. sometimes we can look for help and the help is not present if we can be real and be honest here there were times in our lives where we were looking for help and no one was there to help us we didn't feel like our parents were there we didn't feel like our friends were there we didn't feel like our spouses were there. We didn't feel like anybody was there. And it made us question even if God was there. It made us question whether God was present in what we were going through. Mm. But my brothers and sisters, I came to tell somebody today that just because people aren't present in your situation doesn't mean that God is not present. People may be absent in your life, but God is never absent in your life. We serve a God who is present. We serve a God whose presence is always present in our life. For the, the Lord tells us and through his scripture that he is omnipresent, meaning he is everywhere at the same time. And although God is in New York and God is in London and God is in Florida, doesn't mean that God is not present in every area as a matter of fact just because god is in new york doesn't mean that god is not in baltimore god is everywhere at the same time and although god is everywhere at the same time god is right there with you yeah yeah he's with you when you are going through pain he's with you when you're going through joy he's with you when you're going through ups and downs god is always with us even the scripture tells us in the book of uh, uh, Isaiah that God is Emmanuel. The word Emmanuel literally means in the Hebrew, God with us. And if God is with us, we should never feel as if that we are alone in any situation. Yet the devil, what he tries to do is make us feel as if there's no one here to rescue you. No one here to rescue you out of your depression. He makes us feel as if no one is there to rescue you out of your family circumstances. He makes you feel as if there's no one there to come and help you. But I came to tell somebody today that God is with you and he's present to help you. Even when you feel like he's not there. He's present. Yeah, 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 he's present. Somebody put that in the comment section. He's present. We serve, we serve a God who is present in any and every situation. And he will never leave us nor forsake us. He's present. He's present. Yeah, and I, I know that there are those of us who've been abandoned. By our fathers, abandoned by our mothers, abandoned by our friends. You just feel abandoned. But yet, 
God will never abandon you. He's present. And the scripture tells us that. When we look for help, our help comes from the Lord. When we look for help, we, we should be looking to God. And you want to know why we should be looking to God? Because God knows what to do with everything that you're going through more than you do. He knows what you are going through and he knows how to handle it better than anybody. Better than the therapist, better than the pastor, better than your psychologist, better than anyone. This is why we must look to God for help. Because if God is going to help us, he's going to position us for victory. He's going to position us to succeed. And the success that God wants for us doesn't necessarily equate to the worldly success. Because there's a big difference between godly success and worldly success. Worldly success may look like money. Worldly, worldly success may look like having a big house. Worldly success may look like having a well-paying job. Worldly success may look like having a beautiful wife or a good-looking husband with with five kids and you know all y'all doing well for yourself. That's that's worldly success. Worldly success may look like having a whole bunch of followers online with a blue check. But worldly success would never equate to godly success. Because what godly success looks like, it looks like having a relationship with God. You, have, you know you are successful in Christ when you are in relationship with God. And there are those of us who've been chasing after success, chasing after the cares of this world. And we find ourselves chasing and chasing and chasing. And we're asking ourselves, why is it that we aren't happy? Why is it that we don't have peace? Why is it that we don't truly feel like we have meaning in life? Well, it's because you have your priorities out of whack. Your priorities are, are out of order. But if you prioritize your relationship with God, you prioritize submitting your life to God, to the Lord, Jesus Christ. You will find the success that you are longing for. Not only would you find success, you will find satisfaction. There are those of us deep down inside, you are not satisfied with that relationship that you are in. Deep down inside, you aren't satisfied with all the money that you're making. Deep down inside, there's a longing and there's a groaning in the inside, just yearning after more. You, you got the nice job, but there's something that's missing. You got the relationship, but there's something that's missing. You got everything that you ever wanted, but yet something is missing. What if what you are missing is God in the first place? We're just being led by the Holy Spirit tonight. But as I'm being led by the Holy Spirit, I just feel it in my heart to minister to somebody who's been searching for satisfaction outside of God. Family, you will never find satisfaction outside of God. Haven't you noticed you've been doing life all this time? And yet you aren't satisfied in having a good job. You aren't satisfied in the big house. You aren't satisfied in all this stuff, accumulating stuff, stuff, stuff. You got nice shoes, nice clothes, nice hair, all this stuff. And you still ain't satisfied. It's because you can only find true satisfaction in Christ. The book of Acts tells us it is in him we live and move and have our being. It's only in Christ that we have meaning. It's only in Christ that we have satisfaction. And yet, there are those of us who are still looking to be satisfied by drugs, by sex, by money. There was a time in my life I was looking for all those things. And it 
left a hole on the inside. And that hole was only filled by Christ. Family, if you're looking for help in any way, you can find it in Christ. If you're looking for help, know this, that your help comes from the Lord. The Lord who made the heavens and the earth. That should literally blow your mind. Because if your situation could be as big as it is to you, imagine how God looks at it. If God who created the heavens and the earth is with you concerning your situation, then what is your your hurt to God? There is no problem too big that God could not solve. There is no situation too hurtful that God cannot heal. There is no sickness that is uncurable. God can help you break free, get through what you are going through, family. But you got to remember that your help comes from the Lord. Your help comes from the Lord. Your help does not come from money. Your help does not come from sex. Your help does not come from a teacher. And yes, they could help you with your math and your English and your reading and your chemistry. But they can't help you with what's going on at 2 o'clock in the morning when you've drenched your, your pillow with tears. Tears of hurt, tears of pain, tears of the past. This help can only come from God. There are those of us who need to pray to God tonight. And as you're praying, you're going to feel the sense that God is with you and that God is helping you, that God is helping you make sense of the things that you're going through. And even if you don't get the clarity or make sense of it right then and there, it doesn't mean that God has neglected you. God is not in the business of neglecting his children, but yet he's in the business of helping his children. And we have to stand with confidence and have the faith in knowing that God knows best for our lives. We just got to trust him. When we trust Him, when we rely on Him, when we allow God to do what only He can do, we're able to find rest. What if the reason why you aren't resting in Christ is because you aren't trusting in Him? What if the reason why you are dealing with sleeplessness is because you aren't trusting in God? Anxiety in the life of a believer is a sign that this person has a lack of trust in the Lord. Be real. Anxiety is thinking your way into solving something. Anxiety is thinking your way into a solution. But when has your worry or anxiety ever fixed anything in your life? Never. This is why the Bible says, don't be anxious, be anxious for nothing. But watch this, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. (sighs) Everything will be okay if you simply pray everything will be okay if you simply learn to trust god everything will be okay if you simply learn to allow god to direct you 
but we don't want God to direct us because we want to direct our own life. We want to govern our own life. We want to take the driver's seat. But it's time we get out of the driver's seat and we get on the passenger seat and we let Jesus take the wheel. Jesus, take the wheel. Jesus, take the wheel. Some of us need to make that our prayer tonight. Jesus, take the wheel. Yeah, yeah. Some of us need to be honest and be real. You've been trying to control your life. You've been trying to, you know, make sure your life is a certain way and it's not working. Maybe you need to try something different. Give it to Jesus. That's right, Betty. God would never give up on us. Brian, I came to tell you, brother. He's right there with you. He's right there with you. He's right there with you, brother. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope this was helpful. That's it. I really hope this was helpful. I pray that you find hope in the fact that God is with you. I pray that you find the confidence in knowing that everything is going to be okay. But why is everything is going to be okay? Because you got the Lord because you have the Lord on your side. And because the Lord is your help. And your help comes from him. That's why. So be encouraged. Everything will be okay. Everything will be okay. Everything will be okay. If the Lord is leading you in any way to support and to, you know, bless this ministry, prayerfully consider becoming a Patreon. There's a link in the description. There's also a link in the comment section where you can support. You can click that link and you could support as low as a dollar, low as five dollars, low as ten dollars. Or you can support whatever the Lord's put in your heart. If the Lord is leading you in any way to bless this ministry and support my ministry, prayerfully consider becoming a Patreon. That link will guide you. That link will direct you. And it's very easy. Your, your support is helping me to continue to do live streams like this. Continue to help me, you know, create opportunities to share the gospel and to teach the Bible making sure that I have the equipment, the resources, all that stuff to making sure that all this happens and runs smoothly. Thank you so much for those of you who are already supporting. Shout out to my Patreons. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be on here tonight, but it's because of you guys that we're on this live stream. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.